Cheryl McDermott, and we're going to talk about the three things that you should know before moving to Seattle. So uh, I'm with Mountain View Realty Group to get that out of the way, but we are going to start with number three. Number three is the cost of living. So you probably have maybe been wandering around the internet looking at houses or uh, just looking at the cost of living in general in Seattle. It is pretty high. And uh, I moved back to the Seattle area 2016, December of 2016 from Brevard County, Florida. And talk about sticker shock. I came and looking at houses, I remember telling the realtor that was going to help us relocate, I remember saying, well, we can do like three, 350 because our current house in Melbourne was like 300,000. It was over 2,000 square feet. It had about an acre of land. We had a pool. We had, it, it was just a really great home. And so coming here again, December of 2016, we said, yeah, 300, 350, that's fine. Well, guess what? There wasn't much available for 300 or 350. And if there was, it was going to be a huge competition. You know, uh, even in 2016 here, the, the market was pretty crazy, uh, seeing multiple offers and trying, trying to win. Uh, needless to say, we ended up renting for the first year. Uh, it wasn't even quite a year until we ended up buying after we got kind of established and kind of knew the area. So you're going to see things in Seattle cost a bit more, possibly. Uh, they are higher than many other places in our country. So that may be a bit of a sticker shock. I've put it as number three. Now going on to number two, let's talk about traffic. So during COVID, um, I know it was hard for everybody, but during the COVID pandemic, when people were staying home, Washington was hit pretty hard with the stay-at-home mandates and work-from-home stuff. So the traffic was amazing. The traffic was really, really great. You know, you could get anywhere pretty quick, but nothing was open. So what was the point of that? <laughs> you, want, you want it to be, oh, you want to have no traffic, but you still want things to be open and things moving. So uh, that is not how it works. The traffic is coming back. The traffic is actually back uh, going to going into Seattle, out of Seattle during normal traffic hours, of course, and then also going to Tacoma and out of Tacoma. We're, we're seeing all of that traffic back. When I say all the traffic back, I'm not sure that it's all back because many people are still able to work from home. I know many software developers, my husband included, that is able to work completely remotely now. Uh, as before COVID, that wasn't an option at all. And now it seems to be an option. So when I say that the traffic is back to normal, back to horrible, um, that isn't necessarily the case. It, it isn't as horrible maybe. And maybe I just don't remember. <laughs> but the traffic is something you are definitely going to want to consider when you're thinking about a place to live. Because if your commute is going to be you know, if it looks like on maps that your commute's going to be 15 minutes, well, make sure uh, that you know those traffic patterns. I'm more than happy to help with that. Uh, they can be, they can be, be a bit daunting. There are places that us locals know to avoid during certain times. Okay, number one, last but not least, how about our gloomy winters? <laughs> so. Uh, I remember I moved here, like I said, December, and the first year was fine. I was so excited to be back. I'm originally from here, and I was born actually on the base on uh, Joint Base Lewis McCord before it was Joint Base Lewis McCord, uh, aging myself uh, for you guys, but it was McCord, my mom and dad were Air Force, and but McCord didn't have a hospital, so I was actually born in Fort Lewis. And at some point while I was gone, my gallivanting around the countryside, at some point, it, they became Joint Base Lewis and McCord. So I was born there, I spent my first couple years in the Tacoma area, and then we moved to the um, Olympics. So we moved to a little lake, Lake Cushman, and 
Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful place. And I grew up uh, uh, up there, uh, you know, and I've always missed it, always wanted to come back. So coming back was this huge, exciting moment for me. And I get back and the first year, the first two years, I'm actually really, really enjoying having, you know, winter because coming from Florida, we don't really have winter. And the thing about the Seattle winter is it's really not that cold, you know, on a positive note, it's really just not that cold. And, but I was going to say, and, but it is a bit gloomy and it didn't start hitting me until probably the second year. And then I realized, wow, um, this is pretty gloomy. And November is typically our rainy season, our rain, a rainy month, a rainy month. Uh, January, we get a lot of rain as well. Uh, this year, this is going to be 2022, we are getting snow and snow even in like sea level areas. We're expecting snow tonight. It's December 22nd. Uh, so we're expecting a little bit of snow tonight. Typically doesn't stick, but when it does, because our hills are so steep, things turn to ice and the rain, the slush all turns to ice. So you'll see schools closed down or schools starting later, uh, that kind of stuff. It's not even the rain and the sometimes snow that really affects me. It's the cloud cover. So this cloud cover protects us from my understanding. <laughs> I'm not a meteorologist guys, <laughs> but this cloud cover protects us from really cold weather. And so we don't get that cold weather. We get pretty protected from the cloud cover, but it does make our days dark and cold and what seem to be long. You know, we're, uh, I don't know about everybody. I was going to say, we're all looking forward to, but in my house, everybody is looking forward to the winter solstice where the days will get longer. I think our shortest day, the sun sets at like 4.15 in the afternoon, but it's already gloomy and dark before that. So that can lead to seasonal depressive order, those types of things, which I never thought I had, but now I realize that I do have to take vacations during the winter to escape some of the gloom. The good news is I still have my business in Florida and I can occasionally get away to do that when I'm not here. But these are three things that you may want to consider before moving to Seattle, or at least be aware of them as you come in that uh, these will probably be some of the biggest challenges that you face. So let me know if you have any comments below. I would love to hear from you. Hope everybody's having a really great night. Talk to you soon.